The world has come far in terms of technological and mental development. Different countries all contribute to one pool of knowledge to help the human race progress. However, some countries are still less developed than others, and poverty is still at large. So, you may be wondering, in a world where obesity is becoming a problem, how can there still be poverty and hunger? In other words, why are some countries rich and some are poor? There are several factors that make a country poor. Poor education and health, lack or misuse of technology, poor income distribution, poor infrastructure, etc. But the main factor that we will be looking at today is the issue regarding the empowerment of women in third world societies. So, what does empowering women have anything to do with whether a country is poor or rich? Well, let's look at some facts. Look at this list of 10 poorest countries in the world. 10 out of 10 countries in this list are, one way or another, stuck in a culture where men are glorified and women being oppressed. Take Ethiopia for example. Out of 196 countries worldwide, Ethiopia comes 187th in terms of wealth and standard of living. BBC report shows that nearly 60% of Ethiopian women were subjected to sexual violence including marital rape. In India, 40% of the girls get married before their 18th birthday. And to make matters worse, CNN recently reported that Indian girls are now being sold to sex tourists for sham marriages. According to Wikipedia, sham marriage or fake marriage is a marriage of convenience entered into purely for the purpose of gaining a benefit or other advantage arising from that status. In Niger, only 15.1% of women are literate, and for every 100 men, only 74 women are enrolled in primary and secondary education. Globally, women own only 30 to 37% of small and medium sized businesses, while men own the remaining 63 and 70%. You may be thinking, yes, these are very unfortunate facts, but what does the well being and empowerment of women? have anything to do with whether a country is rich or poor. Firstly, it's simply the right thing to do. Gender equality is a moral imperative, whether you're in government, business, non-governmental organizations, or research institutions. It's simply the right thing to do. Gender bias is still deeply embedded in cultures, economies, political and social institutions around the world. Women and girls face unacceptable levels of discrimination and abuse, which is not only wrong, but also prevents them from playing a full part in society and decision-making. Improving the education and welfare of women could also improve the well-being of their families as they are better informed about healthcare, hygiene and diet. Research shows that increases in the levels of income of women in developing countries lead to greater increases in health levels of families than similar increases in income levels of men. This means an improvement of education of the children in the families as the women pass on their own education and also see it as a way out of poverty. Because of this, the quality of the workforce in the country will improve over time, leading to significant effects upon growth and development. Secondly, women bring a different perspective. Women are more vulnerable to environmental degradation and climate change, but also have different perspectives, concerns, and ideas for change. Until these are taken on board, with women empowered to play a full part in decision-making at all levels, environmental sustainability will remain a distant goal. Yet, women's empowerment must not mean simply adding to their burdens of responsibilities or building expectation of women as sustainability saviors. Diane Elson, an advisor to UN Women, argues in her contribution that the disproportionate responsibility that women bear for carrying out unpaid work is an important constraint on their capacity to realize their rights. Both women and men need time to care for their family and communities and time free from such care. This then leads us to our third point, Women's Unaccounted Contribution To understand what I'm going to talk about, 
Let's take a look at this short clip from the owner of a 28.3 billion US dollar Alibaba group, Jack Ma. About women, one of the secret sources for Alibaba's success is that we have a lot of women. 33% of the senior ma of the management are women, and 24% of the senior management, very top level, are women. We have a women CEO, CFO, CPO, chief people, officer, and we have everywhere. And I think so comfortable to working with them because women in this world, if you want to win in 21st century, you have to make sure that making other people powerful, empower others, making sure the other people better than you are, then you will be successful. So I find the women, they think about the others more than they think about themselves. Yeah, women yeah. think about the kids, husband, parents, much more than the men. And they use a friendliness. In most societies and economies, women's unpaid work and nature's services are not accounted for and therefore not valued properly in our economic, political, and social systems. Women account for around two-thirds of the world's working hours and earn only 10% of the world's income. They produce half of the world's food but own only 1% of its land. Women contribute around $3 trillion to global healthcare, but nearly half of this labor is unpaid, unrecognized, and unaccounted for. To simply put this, women and girls are the most potentially capable and tapped resource on the face of the earth. And this is why we need the marginalizing of power in women and girls, so that they can play a significant role in society. After being suppressed in a patriarchal world for so long, women just need a little help to raise their voices against oppression, female feticide, rapes, dowry, gender equality, and more.